Hello guys, this is Dean from Achilles Drill. In this particular video, we'll be discussing some frequently asked temperature questions associated with the cerebellum. We're talking about the external features of the cerebellum. We'll identify some important structures around it and of course we'll dive into the internal anatomy. Please stick with me to the end. Let's get straight to work. So from our lecture on the inferior view of the brain, this should be a bit familiar to you. You know, in that particular lecture, we talked about all those different regions associated with the inferior view of the brain. And then we did mention that this right here are the two cerebellar hemispheres. And of course, in the midline right here is the brain stem. So we're going to talk about this part I'm kind of highlighting in blue right now, this cerebellum. We'll be emphasizing a lot on it. The external features and numerous things associated with it. All right, as you can see from this picture on the cerebellum, numerous structures have been pinned already on it. As small as you think it is, different structures on it can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them in your stipulates. So don't worry, we'll still come back to this particular question as a quiz. But for now, let's just take a quick overview as regards the external features of the cerebellum. So if you're looking at the cerebellum from on top, it's actually made up of two cerebellar hemispheres. You know, this is not actually a lecture on gross anatomy. It's common stipulates, but then we can't exclude the gross part as well. We still have to mention it. So the cerebellum is such that it has two cerebellar hemisphere and a median vermis. Okay, this is the vermis, and then to the side are what the cerebellar hemispheres. Okay, so uh, that's what I want you to take note of. And on the body of the cerebellar hemisphere, you will observe this elevation and depression similar to what we had in the case of the body of the cerebrum as well. You know, in the cerebrum we had um, sulci and gyri. On the body of the cerebellum, we actually have a similar thing, but they are not called soccer and gyra. Instead, they are called features and folia. Okay, the features are the depression into the um, body of the cerebellum, why the elevation are the folia. Folia meaning like a leaf or folium for singular. Okay, so each of these elevation are different folia. All right. So come to this slide. I also want you to understand that the cerebellum is such that it has three important or three major lobes. Okay. And from this picture, you can see those lobes. There is the anterior lobe. There is the posterior lobe. And as a matter of fact, there is also the floculonodular lobe. As you can see right here, the floculonodular lobe is this very small part. We also have what the posterior lobe, this one in purple right here. And then finally, we have the, what, the anterior lobe in front here. Okay. So, a better representation is on our next slide. Take a look at this. On this particular slide, they have been assigned colors. The yellow part, by the way, this is actually a cut through the cerebellum, a sagittal cut across the cerebellum. There's a brainstem in front, and the cerebellum is what we have behind here. You agree with me, right? So, we want to talk about these lobes once again. The one in yellow is our what? Is our anterior lobe. And this green one, which is very, very quite very large, that's actually the posterior lobe. And then, of course, we have this very small floculonodular loop. The loops are actually separated by things called features. You know, as I explained earlier, on the body of the cerebellum, we have features, and then we also have what folia. But then, there are still some features that are sort of special, like they are more defined also. So let's say they are the major features of the cerebellum. There are, this, there are actually three, but on this picture, we can see two of them. There is a primary feature which actually separates the anterior lobe of the cerebellum from the posterior lobe of the cerebellum okay why right here there's also a posterior lateral feature what is it doing it's separating the floculonodular lobe from what from the rest of the posterior lobe do you get that so in addition to these two features that we have here there's actually one right here as well called the horizontal feature don't worry i'll still show you a picture of it the horizontal feature in its own case it separates the upper surface of the cerebellum what did i say the upper surface of the cerebellum it separates it from the inferior surface okay separates the upper from lower or superior from inferior surface of the cerebellum so that's what horizontal feature does it separates surfaces this one right here primary feature and posterior lateral feature those ones are separating lobes primary will separate anterior from posterior lobe Posterior lateral feature will separate floculonodular lobe from the rest of the posterior lobe. But our horizontal feature, which is not too shown right here, I'll still show you a picture of it. It separates surfaces, superior surface from inferior surface. This superior surface will immediately lie 
under the cerebral under the occipital lobe of the cerebrum. Okay, you just with me. Let me show you a picture right here. So we are seeing clearly the superior surface of the cerebellum. As you can see, this is the primary fissure, and what is it doing? It's separating what the anterior lobe in front from the posterior lobe behind. Okay, but we can't see the horizontal fissure right here. The next slide should show that the horizontal fissure actually runs um, along the cerebellum and it is separating the superior surface or the superior surface. It's separating them from the inferior surface down here. Okay, so that is what our horizontal fissure does surfaces from surfaces. Are you get? And just for emphasis, sake, this projection on the inferior surface of the cerebellum has already called it the tonsils. Those structures too can be pinned in your stipple chase. They have some projections to the um, towards the inferior part of the cerebellum, and they are also very important. I should there should be a better picture of it right here. Take a look at this. Uh, this picture actually is a GIF, and you can see some projection from the um, from the inferior part of the cerebellum. Those projections are actually our tonsils. Well, let me try and pause it and then point out what those structures are okay so these projections that you have down here those are our what those are our tonsils okay so let me play it again so you can see those projections quite well okay so those structures are actually between your stipulations and you have to identify them let's move on to our next slide now okay so on this particular feature on this particular picture rather you can see that a feature on the surface of the cerebellum has been pinned just bear with me with the picture that we have here but let me get your orientation right these are the cerebellar hemispheres, and then to the front here is a cut across the um, brain stem. So a structure on the cerebellar hemisphere has been pinned. A feature, if you have to be very specific, and is that feature we want to identify. Do you know what feature that is? Since it is along the superior surface, that major feature along the superior surface is our primary feature. Okay, so that structure actually pinned A right here is what is a primary feature. We're not coming to B for now. The structure pinned B around here is actually going towards the cerebral arcadot of the brainstem. We'll talk about it as we go on. But I want you to take note of what our primary feature is, and this is also it right here. This exact picture that we have here is the same thing we have here, excluding the cut of the brainstem. So the feature we're having around here is the same feature we're having along this side. That's our primary feature, right? Let's come here. And um, what structure do you think is pinned along this direction what structure do you think that is let me get your orientation right this to the cerebellum and to the front here what do we have we have a cut across the brainstem and what feature do you think will be pinned along this inferior part in a way that's actually our horizontal feature it is separating the superior surface above here from the inferior surface which we can't really clearly see right here so that feature is running horizontally. That's actually our horizontal feature. So I really want you to take note of it as well. So let's come back to this perfect example again. Um, what nerve do you think is tied here? Uh, this is actually not a question directly associated with the cerebellum, but it's closely associated with it, and I want you to take note of it. What nerve do you think is tied here? Even to be specific. Is actually coming up from the pons in a way. Okay, that large nerve is actually our trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five. Okay, and by the way, you agree with me that this is actually the cerebellum. There is a cut across it, a sagittal cut across the cerebellum in this picture, and that cut actually reveals some important white matter within the cerebellum. Okay, so let me erase all this. We we'll still come there. There's a cut across here. You can see some leaf-like structure or tree-like structure along that region but before we move on do you know what structure is pinned here this structure pinned here is actually our tonsils the tonsils i was explaining earlier those are the tonsils there are some important projection from the inferior part of the cerebellum don't forget the nerve tied here is our what our trigeminal nerve so, and we agree this is our median vermis but a cut there's a there, there, we've cut through it in this picture such that we're made to seem to the white matter within it okay there should be a better picture on this place showing that cut better this is a textbook picture and you can see if we try and cut through the median vermis we we'll see this tree like appearance or distribution of white matter that tree like appearance is called the above it is a white matter within the cerebellum 
okay so and that structure trust me it's regularly pinned in your steeplechase you we'll just pin it what structure is pinned a above it a. some we call it the tree of life that's like a common name but the above it is more like the anatomical name for it. it is actually an aggregation of white matter distribution of white matter um, within the cerebellum okay so and this is located within the vermis of course the vermis the medium vermis of the cerebellum right i mean they have different names all these different parts of the um medium vermis have different names. let me show you a slide right here you can see um the lingula is the first part of that um of the vermis there is a central lobe, the come and then the dead cliff, folium, tuba, pyramid, uvula, no, there are a number of them right here. But the ones I want you to take note of for your steeplechase, which is commonly pinned, is the first and the last. The lingula is unique in the sense that it doesn't have a corresponding area on the cerebellar hemisphere. The thing is, all these different parts of the vermis, common, um, central lobe, dead cliff, folium, they will have a corresponding area on the cerebellar hemisphere. I will still show you a picture of it. But in the case of the lingula, Lingula is the only one that doesn't have a corresponding area on the cerebellum, all right? So, um, I want you to take note of it, as well as the nodule right here. The nodule has a corresponding area on the cerebellum and give rise to that structure we, re we call the ladder or flocculonodular lobe, that small lobe of the cerebellum. It is formed, um, it is a form from the combination of the nodule of the vermis and its corresponding flocculus on the cerebellar hemisphere. Take a look at this picture. Someone is probably, bro, what are you saying? This picture should say more on that. This is the medium vermis. And you can see the different parts, lingula. You can see lingula does not have a corresponding part on the cerebral hemisphere. It is just a loop in black right there. For every other part, central lobu, its corresponding part is the hela. Come, its corresponding part is the anterior quadrangular lobu. Downwards right there, you can take a look at this, our beautiful nodule, which, is in, which corresponds to the flocculus. And collectively, both of them are called what? Our flocculo nodular lobe. Are we good? So take good note of that. This is not a gross anatomy class. It's just pointing attention to common steeplechase question, and it's good of you to take note of that. The apovite is actually what is pinned B. Here. It's not to define. We should have a better picture. Okay, but my point is, it is a commonly asked question. Okay, as you can see right here, this distribution of white matter that's actually our apovite. Okay, it's not pinned there as well, but it is there when you cut through the cerebellum. Uh, along the median vermis, you will see that nice distribution of white matter called the above it. All right, so let's identify the regions S, D, and M. <laughs> Someone is like, bro, what's this? Let me draw, let me give you some tips. For example, M and M and um, this M and D are actually parts on the uh, medulla, if that's be very specific. They are structures on the medulla. As you can see, M right here is pointing towards the anterior part of the medulla, while D right here is pointing to somewhere along the lateral part of the medulla. And S right here is pointing to an adjoining structure between the pons and the cerebellum, one important peduncle. So, can we take them one by one, starting with M? Do you know what M is? Have you guessed? It's a structure on the anterior surface of the cerebellum, a, a kind of elevation, a bump. Well, as a matter of fact, our M right here is actually our pyramid. And... That's a pyramid of the medulla. Why D right here is actually pointing towards the olive, the olive of the medulla. We demystified all this in our lecture on the brainstem. So you can check out our lecture if you're not too clear on how we recognized it. And then S right here is actually pointing to the medial cerebellar peduncle. That important peduncle linking the pons to the cerebellum. There is also an inferior um, cerebellar peduncle that links the medulla to the cerebellum. And of course, there is a superior peduncle that links the midbrain above to the cerebellum all right so any of those could be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them as you can see our m right here is our pyramid the d is our olive the s is the medial cerebellar peduncle all right let's come to this picture and identify it as well identify some structures pinned uh we are to identify y y is pointing as a feature and then m right here is pointing to a structure on the tectum of the midbrain okay i already gave you an int all right and then v right here is actually an inverted V. It's pointing to a structure uh, that belongs to a part of the ventricular system. Okay? Someone is like, bro, I don't get you. Don't worry. Let's break it down. So, this feature to start with, the one pinned wire. As a matter of fact, that's our primary feature. 
you know, primary fissure is on the superior surface of the cerebellum. It separates the anterior lobe in front from the posterior lobe behind. That's what our primary fissure does. So that's letter Y. Our Y here pin is referring to what? To the primary fissure. M right here actually points to the inferior colliculi. Okay? The inferior colliculi, a part of the tectum. You know, above here, we have the superior colliculi, that bump above. But inferior to it, what we actually have will be the two inferior colliculi, which are very much associated with auditory stimuli, auditory reflexes and the light. Okay? And then lastly, V right here actually points to the cerebral archidot. The cerebral archidot running through the midbrain, linking the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle is right there. And that's what V is pointing to. Are we good? So I really do hope that is clear to you. And here are the answers again. Y, primary fissure, M, the inferior colliculi, V right here, the cerebral archidot. All right. So lastly, let's take a look at this and just identify it and end the class. What um, this is the cerebellum and then it cuts across the brainstem, of course. The cerebellum is here behind and this is the brainstem in front. So some structures on the brainstem as we pinned. Letter T here is pointing to what? Let me give you a hint. It is a structure on the gray matter. It contributes to the basal ganglia. You know what that is? That darkened area along the midbrain. This is substantial nigra. You're smart, bro. Okay, that's actually our substantial nigra. It so it produces a dopamine. Um, you can see that dark area right there is very much as there with um this melanin-like structure within the brainstem, within the midbrain. It's also involved in the production neuromelanin, involved in the production of dopamine. Okay, and then A right here is actually pointing to that bomb in the anterior surface of the midbrain. Do you know what those structures are? The cerebral peduncle, of course. Those are the cross cerebri, a part of the cerebral peduncle. So they are conducting numerous descending fibers are passing through those um, um, cerebral peduncle and they're relaying information to the lower centers. All right. So it's good of you to take note of all those. Are we good? So T, substantial nigra, A, cerebral peduncle, cross cerebral specifically. Okay. So that's a cross cerebral. Um, it's very much as well. it's a number of us descending fibers from the higher center to the lower center. So thank you very much for tuning in. That brings us to the end of this session on some common stipulated questions associated with uh, the cerebellum. All right. If you find the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and attempt the quiz that we attached to this video. It will definitely be of help to you. Thank you.